everybody good evening happy friday how are you all doing okay so this is um another episode another episode of who am i talk and tonight i have an amazing special guest very excited i hope everyone's doing well i'm just breathing and relaxing i had a glass of wine because it is a friday so i'm allowed I hope everyone is doing well. Hello to everyone that's joined. George, Shank and Generational Darkness. How are you all doing? I have an amazing special guest that I will be introducing very shortly for my series of the Who Am I? This has been a really successful series. I wondered what I could do to really use my platform for purpose while we we're under this lockdown. And as we're coming out, and we are really coming out, I heard the level in the UK is now a level three unbelievable so excited um so little by little we are now moving in the right direction ladies and gentlemen and i wanted to use this platform for purpose and it's really worked i've been able to share a number of very exciting brands and experts and this will continue way over way into when we come out of lockdown because there's so many brands and people that i'd like to introduce you to um and today i'm really excited to introduce someone who is actually a good friend but she's a talented handbag designer and this woman has got an incredible brand called Amshella. Her name is Kerry Andriana and she's going to share with you her story of how she literally came from creating a brand from scratch and getting it in most of the main spread magazines you all know like British Vogue, Tatler, G British GQ. I mean this woman is incredible what she's achieved and this is in a very very short period. So I'm waiting for her to join me and I can introduce you her to her personally. Um, so yeah, very excited. And what are you guys up to this weekend? Anything happening? Anything nice? I heard the weather's not going to be too bad in the UK. Um, I know in America and Brazil, it's very, very hot. I've got an audience there. And I think next week they're saying the weather's going to be extraordinary. So I'm really excited. Um, so I'm just relaxing and waiting for the lovely Andriana to join us very soon. Kerry Andriana um yeah and that's really it nothing much really going on um i want to wish my father he might check in at some point a very happy birthday it's his birthday today guys and my dad doesn't really do instagram or social so i want to send that out to him i adore him and i think kerry under kerry has joined yes she has okay ladies and gentlemen so i'm going to introduce you to the lovely kerry give me one second Any minute now. It's technology. Instagram does its thing, doesn't it? It said it's waiting. She's coming any minute. Hey! Hi! <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we managed Finally. to catch up. I know. Why does your light look so bright? Mine is. I was trying to get my light and done, and I just... Oh. What it is, I've got a tube light. I'm getting better at this thing called live, yeah. trying to create that look. And so it's just a tube yeah. light that's over there that kind of shines to kind of create you're the making, energy. You're making looking me very want to go nice. And, thank you. You're making me want to go and get a lamp now. And oh, no, like, no, don't. Anything. You look wonderful. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, ladies and gentlemen, I can see you very well. I can yeah? see you. Okay. And how are you? Um, exhausted. Mm. I've had a really really busy week um so we've just taken on the brand has just taken on two new social media interns okay um, yeah i'm really happy about that so they're starting mm -hmm. next week um mm -hmm. some really good appointments and it's just been really crazy you know you have those weeks don't you in business you have mm -hmm. a week where things are kind of going smooth and then you have another week and it's just manic manic and just, yeah yeah, and I've just had one of those manic weeks. But yeah, I'm glad it's the weekend, although it's never a weekend for us. I know, we don't stop literally seven days a week, um, even though we relax a little bit, but we're always having to keep on the ball, haven't we? So it never yeah, stops. Never stops. Yeah, ladies, it never So ladies and gentlemen, I have the lovely Kerry Andriana, who is the mm -hmm. CEO and founder of a beautiful brand 
handbag called Amshella. Now, I've got it next to me, and I'm, I'm going to share it with you in a minute, but I'm going to let her have a chat, and I'm going to show you what this wonderful, beautiful, talented woman creates. Her bags are out of this world. And after this IG Live, you will be going online and going and buying every bag that you can because he's got so many <laughs> variations. <laughs> they're gorgeous. So they're, oh, thank you. oh, my goodness. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm just so in awe of your journey. I think what you've managed to achieve in how long has the brand been going? Just the first thing. Just three years. Three years. Three years. Okay. So she, she's going to tell you yeah. her story. Three years she's done this. So tell me from the beginning. We're still a baby. Sorry, um, my darling? We're still a baby in the, in the grand scheme of things. Um, so to everyone that's watching, so my name's Kerry Andriana. I'm from mm -hmm. Bristol, um, the notorious Bristol at the moment. We're going to um, talk about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I trained as a lawyer. So I was a lawyer for 15 years. So I specialised in criminal law to begin with. Then I moved to employment and then I end, then prison law. I was a prison lawyer, specialised in that for um, eight years. Um, and then there was a kind of a shift in the legal profession. And I ended up being, um, my last role was a quasi-judicial position. So I was an adjudicator in the property disputes area. Oh, wow. And I did for three years and then there was another shift in the legal profession with to do with funding and um you know things like the carter review um mm -hmm. so i became redundant from my job um mm -hmm. and then it was my children i have two boys who said you know in your spare time you always used to make handbags you know why don't you create your own brand and mm -hmm. i thought don't be, you know i'm not going to do that um and then the idea just wouldn't leave me and i just mm -hmm. thought why not and then in between all of that, so in between being made redundant, um, I had a relationship breakdown and um, subsequently lost my home. So I went from a very high flying career to homelessness, literally in the space of four to five months. And it was at that point, we then, I then decided to create the brand. And wow. it's probably been the best thing that I've ever done. And yeah, here we are now. Three That's years amazing. later, the bags are being worn by celebrities on red carpets, as you know. Um, yeah. yeah, it's been it's a been really, a crazy year, really surreal. And what inspired you? Was there anything around you? Was there a family member, anyone you used to watch who was a seamstress? As a Caribbean, sometimes we used to see a lot of that growing up. Was that an inspiration, or was it just that you always had this creativity in you, just needed to, it to come out? No, my grandmother came here um, from the Caribbean, from Jamaica, in the Windrush era. Wow. So when she came, um, you know, it was very limited for them to be able to go into certain shops, wouldn't let, you know, no blacks, no Irish, no dogs, That's type right. of thing. Yep. Um, yep. So she would make clothing for the church, for people to wear to church. So my mother was then training to be a nurse and would leave me with my grandmother on weekends and my grandmother would always be sewing so she never made bags but she made suits and shirts and blouses and trousers for the men and I just became fascinated with the sewing machine so mm. I've never had it training but I just knew how to operate it because I mm. every weekend I, I saw um mm -mm. but one thing I really remember when I was about six years old for every outfit that my grandmother made there was always a bag, <laughs> always a bag to go with it. And I remember she would lay all these outfits out on her bed and every outfit would have a bag. Mm. So I think that's where my love of bags came from. And mm. as I grew older, when I got to like a teenager, 14, 15, she would give me her, her old bags. And I would think, mm -hmm. oh, I like them. They're not trendy enough. So I would then adapt the bag. The bag. And, um, mm. you know, I would take out pockets. I would change handles. I would put adorn them with jewelry and really create them that were modern. So I've always kind of done that. Um, mm. I never thought it would actually be a career. I then went off and went to law school. Wow. And then yeah. three years on, we're three years in, you've yeah. had your bags in British Vogue, in Tatler, mm -hmm. in, yeah. in British GQ, 
L, mm -hmm. that was the last one I saw. I mean, Vanity Fair. Vanity Fair, everywhere. I mean, yeah. how are these, <laughs> from some, you're a lawyer, a qualified lawyer, then you thought, you know what, I'm going to dabble, I'm going to try and make a bag or two. And then, you know, these people have been in the industry for years and have not achieved half, and you're award winning as well, not achieved with half what you've achieved. So what happened? Was it just destiny? Did you, you know, network like crazy? How do you think they even knew who you was? How did this even happen? Um, I think it's a culmination of things. Mm -hmm. So I try and best describe it. So I think sometimes you walk in a purpose that's not really your purpose. So if I can explain that, I went to law school, um, probably maybe because my parents wanted me to go to law school from the Caribbean. You're from a Caribbean country. They want you to do well. They want you to have what they didn't have. Of course. So I think to be a lawyer or a doctor, that was quite fine. Um, so I think going to law school, I think maybe I kind of did it for them as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, so that's when I say when you, you're walking a purpose, but it's not really your purpose. Um, and sometimes something happens in your life that allows your purpose to actually come to the front. And I really think that is literally what has happened. Mm -hmm. So there's that element of it. And then there is luck and fate and who you know i'm very spiritual so yeah. and i believe that god puts people in your life um when you need them when you need them and mm -hmm. um i was supposed to say that i met um as you know a very good friend of mine and, and obviously you know as well naomi i um yes, who at the time was um a contributing editor fashion editor for hello magazine at the mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. um and she contacted the brand and said, you know, I love the bags. I'd love to take them to Fashion Week, which she did. Um, and that was in, so we launched in the April of 2017. And mm -hmm. that was in the July to get ready for the September Fashion Week. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she did. She, she, we had two bags then. It was the Elia guitar strap and the um, Sienna clutch. And mm -hmm. she wore them. And she wore the bags for the whole week. And I guess people would say, you know, what are you wearing? Um, yeah. and she, she would obviously say I'm wearing this outfit and then this mm -hmm. bag by Amshella mm -hmm. and obviously nobody had heard of us by then um, so I guess mm -hmm. they went and did their research and we were quite new so you have to remember at this point we were only roughly six months old oh wow and then and then the feature started to come in you know would you like to feature in Vogue would you like to feature in Vanity Fair and it just all happened so quickly wow that I still now look back and think, wow, what really happened? <laughs> yeah. Out of the blue. So I think, it, yeah. So I think it's a lot of the things. And I think obviously once they did receive the product, because mm -hmm. it's, it's got to be quality as well. Of course. So I think once they did receive the product, I think people were pleasantly surprised at the packaging, mm -hmm. um, the, the quality of the bags. And like, you know, who is this girl? Who is this brand? And, mm -hmm. you know, at that point I was doing it by myself. Um, we now have a small team since yeah. about the last eight months that I'm building. Um, so yeah, I think it was a combination of things, mm. really. That's amazing. And you hand stitch the bags. You make the like you've hand made the bags. Some of them, haven't you? Yeah. So it, originally, um, wow. the bags were all all handmade. Um, I had a I turned my kitchen into a, the studio. <laughs> Everything was you know I had one of those big kitchen diners. And um, I didn't have any space. Um, so I literally transformed the dining area, um, wow. what would have been the dining area, into the studio. Yeah. So um, bags were originally all made there at home. Mm -hmm. um, and then subsequently, um, as the business grew and grew, we had to move to manufacturing. So we've been only been manufacturing now since last July. So we haven't been manufacturing. It'll be nearly a year. So the wow. first two years we spent, everything was handmade. Um, and even now we still have some of the handmade bags, um, online. And mm -hmm. if they do get an order, I do try and still hand make them because I do That's actually amazing. like the process of actually making the bag. Um, mm. it was a huge step for me to move to manufacturing because obviously I think as a lawyer previously, I'm not really used to delegating tasks. <laughs> I hate it. Yeah. You want to control yeah, it make sure you can yeah everything yep 
I got to do everything from the sample, from picking the leather to the prototype to choosing the straps or anything, the hardware. I want to do it all. Um, but as the business grows, unfortunately, it's just not practical. So you have to then learn to delegate. So um, mm. it's been a very a learning a learning curve for me, yeah. really. Yeah. And and as you as you yeah. said, as you grow, you have to because you can't be everywhere. As much as we like to control everything, it's good to know what's going on but it's also equally good to be able to focus on the high level stuff that you need to yeah. do to expand yeah. the brand so yeah. it's having the right people isn't it the right team that you can yeah. trust with certain roles yeah and that is and that is the thing because i think um this is my first business mm. um and so i've had to learn business as we go along yeah. um when was when i when we originally launched even though we had a website and everything like that my idea was that it was going to be an instagram shop Mm. And then within six months, I'd find another legal position and I would go back to law. And obviously, as you know, we appeared in British Vogue and then it just the rest kind of... History. <laughs> the rest Crazy. is history. Oh, I, haven't yet been able to... I haven't yet been able to go back. All of my colleagues still work in law and law firms and are judges and barristers and solicitors. And they're always like saying, mm. Perry, when are you coming back? And I do sometimes say I'm trying, but then, you know, <laughs> the, fashion, the fashion industry won't let me go yet. No. Um, yeah so that's really the, so that's really the fun side of it but I think mm. you know I think you just have to try and sometimes your passion just comes hi Victoria hi Victoria that's one of the brand ambassadors ladies and gentlemen yeah so well, I'm gonna Victoria, have to... she's lovely I'm gonna... um so Victoria Valentine Brown is our um chief brand ambassador and I just love her hi Tatiana I, I haven't I seen you for you. ages so this is the box it comes in, ladies and gentlemen. And um, try and get in it now. Live on air. Um, I think, is it a slide? You tell me. Oh, I know. I know now. No, I know. It's, it's my yeah, I got it. Okay, we're going to do this. Live on air. Oop, there we go. And, and literally, I haven't even taken out the packaging because I wanted to do this live on air. Okay. Oh, I've got hard. And as I'm saying, all the little things. So this Hi. is like the insert. This is the insert that you get. Wow. And um, I'm so excited because I've, I've got so many of her bags, but it's just the experience when you get the bag. And can we talk about this bag? Because this bag is our first vegan bag yeah um so that is the thais um vegan croc mini bag um and it's approved by P it's approved by peter as well which yep. i'm really excited about um yep. and we it's our first vegan bag and we have pledged to be fully vegan for the next and within the next three years so um eventually the leather bags will kind of fall away and we move to mm -hmm. full vegan and it's something i'm really passionate about as well and it's, I think it's the right decision for the brand. And I think you couldn't have got it better. You know, the whole, it's, it's allowing everybody to have that accessibility to your brand, you know, that everyone can join in, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think there's so much materials out there you can use that you don't have to use any materials that involve cruelty to animals. This is it. Okay. Um, oh, it's so nice. Look. And thank you. Oh, it's so nice. And it's my favorite color ever. And then you've got so the that, straps. Yeah, that's the cobalt. Yeah, that's the cobalt um, royal cobalt one. Mm -hmm. And um, right, so you see on there. So that's actually made of is a hundred percent polythene. Oh. So, and the the inside is actually made of ten coal. So ten coal is actually made from wood fibers. Okay. So that's the fabric that's inside the bag. And then what we did was we then had the um the print, the crocodile print. It's been molded, it's been hand molded Beautiful. to look like a crocodile, crocodile leather, but it's not. It's a hundred percent vegan. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's just the it's really, I've only seen the pictures. I've only seen the pictures, so to see it physically, it's really nice. Thank you. And, and I can fit um, anything it, I need. Yeah, and it's just been in Veggie um, Veggie Life as well with Victoria Featherstone Pierce. She did an amazing article in it, and she has that one as well. And it's, it's I really love nice. it. 
god. And there are five really? there are five colours, by the way. Have you seen the other colours? Yes, yeah. tell me the colours. You've got the red, which I think is stunning, but and the blue. We have ruby red. Oh. Ruby red. <laughs> oh, and then we have the royal cobalt. We have emerald iris, which is lovely. Yeah. We have yeah. a deep purple and we have chassis black. So um, I did the five colours because I think that, you know, people will lend themselves to whichever is their favourite colour. And I think of there's course, enough of colour to go, to go around. But um, Victoria says she loves the gold handle as well. I Thank love you. It. It's, they're so gorgeous. And that's Thank just you. one of the bags. I mean, you've got different collections. Name the different collections and the meanings behind the collections as well. You always have a story. Yeah. So the, the first collection was called, when we launched, was called The Character Within. Mm -hmm. um, I get asked about that a lot. So my thoughts is that if you take any woman's handbag, for example, and throw it, empty it out on a table, you can... Mm -hmm practically tell everything about that woman because what we hold most dear to us is normally in our <laughs> handbag so yeah. whether she's a sports person whether she you know she's into beauty whether she got books because she likes to read whether mm. it's in their children's diapers and bottles you know she might be a mum you know with mm. small children so generally um that was the name that was the reasoning behind the first collection was the character mm. within Mm -hmm. the second collection um is probably my favorite to date um because it's called the kazibi rose collection and we had mm -hmm. international model Layla powell um mm -hmm. she was the face of amshella for that collection um and that one was really poignant for me because we had a dear friend which is Layla's brother um and his name is Jamal Kazibi Powell. Um, and unfortunately, he lost his life just as we were about to go into process for making the second collection. So we named the collection literally after him. So it's called mm -hmm. the Kazibi Rose Collection. So that's probably the most um, sentimental collection that I've ever done mm -hmm. um, with him in, in mind. And we created, um, I've only ever done two male pieces. Mm -hmm. And one of them was backpack, which we named after his nickname, which is the roughest backpack. So mm -hmm. um, it's very amazing. Mm -hmm. um, the third collection we had was the Renee Brunel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I have a niece, Renee, your Renee, and mm -hmm. it all just kind of went together. We yeah. then um, went to shoot on the SS Great Britain, which is located in, in Bristol. So it's... Um, it's, you know, one of the biggest steamships that was ever been created. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually used, was able to get some wrought iron from the actual ship. And we used that to make the handles wow. on, on, to make the straps. So the actual straps mm -hmm. on the Rene Brunel bag are um, pressed wrought iron. Um, I think it's 55% comes actually from the ship, which is oh, why really? it's the even know Rene that. Brunel. Yeah, wow. so it's called Renee Brunel after Eisenbar King Jim Brunel, who actually designed that ship. Um, mm -hmm. So that was quite significant. And also what was special about that collection was they actually, we applied to the um, Heritage Commission to let mm -hmm. us actually do the photo shoot, the editorials on the ship. Wow. I did not think they were going to say yes at <laughs> any given time. And the reply came back was, of course you can. Yes, yeah, crazy. Oh my God. So we actually shot Renee Brunel, Renee Brunel with, you know, remnants of the actual ship itself mm. on board, on board the actual ship. So that was just amazing. Like going into the engine room um, and it's still turning, um, you know, going onto the deck. It, it was just amazing. Down, you know, it was, it was an incredible experience. And, you know, the, the story behind Brunel, obviously it's quite, um, current, um, the current climate that we've got has a lot of significance yeah. for you being a ma woman of colour. Um, your brand yeah. is a black brand, and then to shoot on the ship that has his, such stories that's amazing. But I think that is what was quite special because I think mm. there were links to the ship and the transatlantic slave, slave yep. trade. Mm. But for me, I felt it was important that we did shoot on the ship because. You know, hundreds of years ago, I probably would have been below the decks. 
That's right. And here we are now on top of the deck as a CEO of my own company doing a photo shoot. So I think for me, it was about by doing this shoot, we are able to show the journey of how far we've come. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of, it was very significant to me. Um, very to do it and you know I didn't really debate it either it just came to me and I thought that's what we need to do mm. and um I was really thankful to the Heritage Commission really thankful to um the staff on board the SS Great Britain that made us so welcome um mm. they literally pulled out all the stops for us it was just amazing mm. amazing yeah and, and then the final collection is mm. what we have now which is our first vegan bag so it's a taste mini croc vegan bag you see this ladies and gentlemen absolutely stunning i love it you might have to go back a little bit so they can yeah. see it. that's very true see do you see yeah. it guys how stunning she's oh. so cute I, I love it i'm just thinking about what i'm going to put in it if i can fit <laughs> my whole world in this one this bag and uh, i will do you, I'll find know, it. It has a, do you know it has a security feature as well i bet you haven't no. even realized no if you open it, if you open it yeah and right at the front, yeah. Well, you might you might not think it's a it's a security feature, but it is. You could put your phone and your credit card. Oh yeah, in here. Yeah. So look, guys. So right in here, you can put. Oh, it's just amazing. Yeah. Um, the reason I did that was really my own personal reasons because I'm always losing my cards. I'm always yeah. losing my phone. So. So lovely. Thank you, and then CNI Records. You can see everybody saying, hello, excuse me, nice bag. It is a beautiful bag. Anyone's Thank got you. any gifts that they need to purchase? I think you found it. And we, we do gift cards as well. We do, recently you... launched, we've recently launched gift cards on the website. Mm -hmm. so they're, on, they're valid for 12 months. They're £50, um, which is only one. And mm. then, um, but they're valid for a year. So some people have been you know, purchasing, I guess, gift cards, so they can contribute mm. to someone's gift, which is quite nice. But, you know, we're affordable luxury, so the bags are not overpriced in the grand, mm. in the grand scheme of bags. And it was very important mm. for me that we did affordable luxury. Um, mm. Because contrary to public belief, I think people say, oh, you know, you're a former lawyer, you had a huge salary, and which I did. Um, mm. However, I also had children that, you know, were at private school and... Um, I want to do things with them and be able to invest in their future. So I never really had the disposable income to really buy, mm. you know, a two a two thousand pound bag. I'd rather put that to my children's college fund, cool. which is what cool. happened. So, but I still wanted to align with a nice bag for a good price. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then hi Denise, hello oh, Denise, hi Denise, and hello everyone that's joined. Thank you for joining in to the Who Am I? If you, if you don't know who this lovely lady is, her name is Kerry Andriana. And she is the CEO founder of Amshella. And this is one of the bags that I've just got. And I'm so happy. Oh, my goodness. So <laughs> amazing. And, um, oh, you know, we, sp we spoke about history. And I did a bit of research. And there's a little bit more to you than meets the eye. See, yeah. Dark Horse didn't realize there's a story behind your family, which is really powerful right now. Tell everyone right. about it. Really powerful. Um, so obviously I'm, well, I'm from Bristol, um, and a lot of people, I guess now that, you know, the story that Edward Colston, the statue that was pulled down in Bristol, mm -hmm. so he was a transatlantic slave owner, um, in the like, I think 1800 or around that time, um, who then went on to become a great, you know, philanthropist and benefactor mm -hmm. of the city. So he built several schools, hospitals, almhouses. Um, the whole city is filled with him. Names, roads, towers, hotels, you name Everything. it. You can't go anywhere in Bristol without coming across the name Colston. So I actually went to Colston School as well, mm -hmm. myself. Okay. And, that, an amazing, and, and I had an amazing time. I've been asked this question a lot lately. And I've said to people, it's an amazing educational establishment despite the name and I would yeah. if I had a daughter I would definitely send her there it's an amazing yeah. school mm -hmm. um so moving forward obviously in England in the UK we have what's now as we all know the race relations act yeah. 
1965 and then went on to 1968 where it involved housing and employment so as a lawyer myself I've obviously come across the act either in, in practice um, but what a lot of people didn't know which I was really surprised a lot of people didn't know how how we actually came to have the race relations act mm. i mean i always saw everyone knew but obviously mm. when it happened recently i was surprised that a lot of people didn't know so back in 1963 yeah um <clears throat> there was a west indian caribbean association in bristol which served to assist people of color with any type of disputes that they had in the country um so what you had was you had five gentlemen, or was it six actually? So you had a man called Roy Hackett, who um, founded the association, and several friends, um, one of which is now Paul Stevenson, um, MP, um, yeah. and MP as well now, um, Guy Bailey, mm -hmm. Audley Evans, mm -hmm. uh, Prince Brown. Um, so they were the members of this committee. Um, and I think they were approached by a, at a complaint that someone had applied for a job with a bus company and the bus company had said, we do not employ black or people really? of colour. Wow. So what they did was they sent in Guy Bailey to make an application to the bus company and it was confirmed that it was true. They don't employ mm -hmm. people of colour. Um, so Roy Hackett, and the, with Paul Stevenson as a spokesperson for the group, then staged a boycott of the buses. Mm -hmm. um, so it's now famously known as the Bristol Bus Boycott 1963. Yeah. yeah. So because it was so successful, it gained national attention. So therefore, people of colour would not take the bus at all. They would just walk everywhere. So the bus company was then losing money. Mm -hmm. um, it became national attention. So you had the bus boycott going down in the south of the UK. And at the time you then had the mining with Arthur Scargill and that going on That's in the right. north. That's right. um, and then out of that, it gained so much national attention. Um, obviously Parliament got involved. Mm -hmm. The bus company relented and then actually changed all of their policies that they would employ people of colour. Um, and then Harold Wilson introduced um, the Race Relations Act. So the significance of the story is, is that Roy Hackett, hmm. who created the West Indian Association that led the bus boycott um, with his five friends, um, is my grandfather. Your granddad, unbelievable. See, you've yeah. got that in you, that entrepreneur, that fighting, that energy is, look. Yeah. So wow. he's, he's, my, he's my, yeah, so he's my paternal um, grandfather. And... It's really weird because obviously all of this has just come up. So I, yeah. I was asked, to, I did a BBC interview recently mm -hmm. um, and some other, you know, little interviews and things. And I mean, to me, he's just granddad. So I know, you know, people keep asking me, well, you know, how do you feel? How do you feel? And it's a really weird question for me because I think growing up, um, we always knew that he was involved in some type of activity. Um, I didn't know he was a civil rights activist when I was growing up. I didn't know until I was about 15. Incredible. Yeah, about Denise 15. said it's an incredible story. It is. It's incredible. Thank you. <laughs> about 15, 16. Um, I know he used to go to meetings and things, but you never know <laughs> where he's It's going. granddad though, isn't it? You're not noticing. Yeah, no, oh. no, nobody really knew. Um and then, even after I found out, obviously you're a teenager then, was going yeah. off to college, university, you know, he's just out doing his thing, doing what he does. Mm. Um, so, obviously, I mean, this, and the, this boycott on that happened in um, 1963, so it actually happened before I was even born. That's correct. Yeah? So, I didn't realise that he was famous. Yeah. I never amazing. knew he was he was just granddad. He still is. And, he, um, and he's, OB, he's OBE, isn't he? OBE. Yeah. Yeah. And he's also yeah. got the Morn, Morn coin yeah. from the Queen as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's really weird because about two years ago, um, he called me and he yeah. said, um, 
can we confirm your address again? So I gave it to him. I was like, granddad, it's such and such. And I said, why? And he said, oh, I'm sending you something. And I said, okay. So um, he actually photocopied and he'd made copies. Hold on. Stay yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah, don't get it, don't get it. Wow. So ladies and gentlemen, this lovely lady is a top bag designer, but now you're hearing the history that her grandfather literally was yeah. the catalyst to the 1965 Race Relations Act in the UK. It's so poignant right now. You know, globally, the climate is very unstable well, to think that yeah, your grandfather. It, it, it's why we have the Race Relations Act. It, it's so why we, unbelievable. I'm so, I'm so naive. I'm so, I feel very naive right now. <laughs> I know, so, it's phenomenal. Back, yeah, so going back to the story, so two years ago he called me and he said, you know, you know, what's your address again, blah, blah, blah. And um, I said, why? You know, and he said, I'm sending you something. And I was like, okay. So what he'd done is he had made copies of um, a lot of the documents dating back to the Bristol bus boycott oh, and wow. the act and everything. I know. And he got it here. Us. yeah so we all have this is just some of it so we all have documents showing the thing wow yeah like dating back to um all sorts of things when he got the maundy thing at the um from the queen that's amazing so yeah and it's just like and, I, and it's really funny because i'll be honest when i actually received them i was like oh thanks granddad thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> you know, put them in the drawer, put them in the folder. And, didn't really, you know, didn't really, didn't realise actually. Your penny yeah. didn't drop. Right. Yeah. So this, this here is um, my granddad, Paul Stevenson, yeah. and Guy, Guy, Guy Bailey. So this is the yeah. one who they sent into the bus company to actually see if it was, um, if it was real. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it's um, so and, legacy. You know, that's him and Tony Benn. Yeah, that's him and Tony yeah. Benn as well. So we have just loads and loads of things, and it's only like now. So I'm so saying to my cousins, you know, mm -hmm. we really need to make sure we preserve his legacy because he's 91 now. He's oh, 91. Okay. Um, yeah. Bless him. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's, that's it's an absolute honour. Uh, it's it's incredible. If people were saying it's it's lovely, it's an incredible story. And it so makes sense because of how passionate, driven, it's, it's in your DNA to be successful, yeah. to be a boss, to be a leader, to change things is yeah. in your DNA. It's phenomenal. Yeah, but I'm, I'm still very shocked at how many people didn't know how we actually got, got the, the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. People, yeah, you're right. I was really, yeah, I was really... Mm -hmm. um, I was really astonished by that. And then mm. even myself, like, found myself thinking, wow, he's such a great man. Besides the fact that he's my grandfather. But to do what they did and, you know, they used to sit in the road to block the buses, you know. And mm. I guess it's at a time when in, in America you had, the, obviously, the civil rights movement That's going correct. on. Over the That's and, and, and things. So um, I'm having to educate myself as well because That's fine. I'm not really... It wasn't something that I'd never really thought about or looked into deeply because, well, he was just granddad. I just, you know. <laughs> and Dinah, she said, we're not going to know because we're not really taught anything about black history. You know, when I was at school, I fought too for yeah. now to get black history in the curriculum because they never used to talk about it. And, you know, hopefully yeah. now with the climate, we're going to see some more positive changes to understand there's, there's two sides to our story. We've got unfortunate slavery but we've also got the egyptians and you know we could be here all day talking about that so there's some yeah. stories that we can definitely share, share that show us how amazing we are yeah i think the only sad thing i think when i think of like what my granddad and those great men friends of his paul stevenson guy bailey and that like what they did and what they achieved it's just sad that we're still here 50, 50 plus Makes years you, later yeah. it's crazy yeah. but you know yeah, but um, to actually what they achieved to create legislation and um, make a change mm. um, has been amazing. But maybe that's where I get it from. I don't know. That totally, <laughs> I think. And, you know, all we can do is hope for a better future. I think, you know, 
the, the, as I say, the volcano has erupted and they've got to now settle the lava and it, and it will happen. And I think time will tell, Yeah, you know, but back to your brand, that was an amazing right. story. And, and, it, and I wanted the people to hear there's so much more to this amazing lady. Now, as a CEO, as a founder, as a, a business owner, what have been your highs and your challenges? So a couple of your highs and a couple of challenges you want to share. Couple of my highs with the brand. Mm. I've had quite a few. I've had quite a few. Yeah. I think um, appearing in British Vogue. Who doesn't Amazing. want to be in British? I mean, wow. And it, <laughs> and it was the thing was it was such a small feature, doesn't but matter. a feature nonetheless. It's phenomenal. Um, I, I went to. They actually did send me the copy and everything wow. i actually went to the store i bought about 10 <laughs> did you take it did you take a picture like have the have it behind you and open it out and take a picture and go look just, yeah, i went to, i went to sleep with it on my bed <laughs> that night and to just throw salt mm -hmm. on it and everything what happened in the um the next day um edward enningville he actually, mm -hmm. I tagged him in it and he actually liked it. So that was Yay! really the icing on the cake. <laughs> yeah, was, and I, I gave one to my mum, my nan, every, everyone, literally, yeah. you know. Um, so that was probably the high, one of my highs for the brand. Yeah. Um, another high from the brand was the Kazibi Rose collection. Mm -hmm. Of course. After the big meaning. Of, um, yeah. yeah. And another high of the brand, I think, is the Thais bag and getting that approved by um, Peter because that meant so much to me. Cool. Um, cool. I didn't want to put out a product and just say it's vegan. I wanted mm. it to be approved and have the accreditation so that people who buy the product are, you know, fully verified that this is actually a, ve a vegan product. Stamp of um, approval. So that's mm -hmm. probably the three highs, the three mm. lows. I want to say yeah, challenges. Exactly. I want to say challenges. As a business owner, there's always a challenge and you overcome them. You're here still. But what are things that people never told you about being a business um, owner that you wish you could, you can tell someone else? Um, that's a really good question. I would say, um, lack of how hard it is to get funding for a new business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I never, I never knew that. I thought you just had a business plan and, you know, <laughs> you, and then, off you go. And off how, you much go. Is, how much do you need? Yeah, no, it's not. Off you go and you walk out, you walk out with a, su a suitcase like Ocean's Eleven. That's literally what I thought. <laughs> money, <laughs> money, 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 money. And you go, no, it doesn't go like that. <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was very difficult. Um, learning that for any product, there's a lot more to just posting on Instagram, learning about distribution, learning about how to really market a product, learning about your target audience and all of the things um, to make people want to align with your brand. Mm -hmm. so, and, I, and I say that is a low at that point because you're so new to everything. Mm -hmm. um, you, it's really a lot to take in because and I think it's at that point when you realize it's serious. So there's a point when you open your business and it's all fun. Yeah. Oh, we're doing this and we're doing that. And yeah. then there comes that, that boundary point when, okay, the fun's over now. Mm. We're now running a business. So I think um, that was kind of difficult. And another one, I think. Dinah yeah. said it's hard. She said it's hard. She's a business yeah. owner. Yeah. Yeah, or a challenge. What else would be a challenge? Um, I can't really think. I could think of one because I know you is letting go and knowing that whatever you've done is the best that you can do because you're a perfectionist. I, I know that about you. Um, yeah. Like, um, how many times are you yeah, going to pack the bag? Right. About eight. About eight times. See, literally. You know, it was, and then you let, especially you know, when we were yeah, especially when we were making the bags. When I was making the bags, um, and we'd get an order in, I would pack it about eight times. Pack it, unpack it, <laughs> pack it, unpack it, 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 you know, because um, I am a perfectionist. And I think letting go and delegating, yeah. I find oh. it very, 
I find it very difficult to delegate. And now I have a small team. So I have a junior accessories designer, business consultant. We have an in-house photography manager. I've just taken on two social media interns. Excellent, um, excellent. I don't know how that might pan out. Um, I'm sure it will be great. But my, my problem will be is that I actually like doing the social media. But I've come to a point as a businesswoman, I don't have time. I really do love the interaction with people. Course, I really do. I love to respond and reply and answer messages and let them really know that, you know, there's no corporate veil here. When you're talking yeah. to the brand, you are actually, I am, di you know, in conversing dialogue with you. So yeah. um, they're amazing girls. I'm sure they're going to be fine, but I'm sure they're going to tell me off within a week and yeah. ban me from, they'll probably block me out of Yeah, more than likely. <laughs> I think, you know, yeah. I think I think the most powerful and Diana said working every day that God sent. I mean, we all work 24 hours and I've got I've learned to work smarter than harder because you've only got yourself. And we're just worn out by the end of the week because we've just been working, working, working. But sometimes we need to work smarter. So I'm, I'm yeah. learning that and I'm still not letting go because I don't know how to really let that go. But I'm trying, you know, so working smarter for me is one of the things I'm really trying to do. Like what I've started to do, I've started taking up exercise a lot more. So I've recently, as mm. you know, started run, running, which I mm. absolutely love. And um, I've been saying to people, "How? Do, why did you not tell me that running was so much fun? And, yeah, fun. you know, um, I'm not a gym person, so I can't mm. really go to the gym. I get bored so quickly, but I find that running um, mm. a couple of times a week has really helped me to kind of steady myself because obviously mm. the brand is growing the brand is getting bigger it's getting more well known um and there's a lot that comes with that and there's a lot of responsibility also when you have staff as well of course, um of course. If you're not you're not just managing yourself anymore and mm. making hamburgers in the kitchen so you know you're going into a full-on production so mm. it's really trying to learn how to develop those skills so you can be the best not just for yourself but also the best leader for them so they produce the best work and you know yeah. and the Amshella team we're all a very much a family like you said right from Victoria our brand ambassador to the social media girls that are just joining to the in-house photographer we are very much a family um, and that is very important to me um to invest in people, whether it's with kindness, humility, I don't tolerate anything, um, but by being the best to people. Mm -hmm, and I think mm -hmm. when you have a family unit, it just works. No, so I'm very careful about the selections that we do make, because mm. um, you really don't want that kind of equilibrium to be tipped. So um, creating a family behind the brand, um, mm. It's totally. that seem to work. I think you find some of the most successful bands, brands that we have, we know today, they've been with them for years. People have been part of that team for years yeah. and literally yeah. followed them through the whole journey because it's trust as well. It's really important yeah. and honesty. And yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I definitely have tried to create that um, mm -hmm. and it works very well. The team mm -hmm. that I have now, I really do class them as my best friends. Um, mm -hmm. We work very well together, whether we're, you know, on working on the on brand objectives or whether we're just like having a general conversation. I generally mm -hmm. do care about my team. Um, yes. I'm very protective as well of them. Mm -hmm. And um, we get on fine and it works. Mm -hmm. It works. Because, and, like you said, that trust is there. It's so important. And what about the future? You know, we're slowly coming out of a global crisis. Um, you know, I know you've been very busy working behind the scenes. But where do you yeah. see the future of Amshella? Are you working on anything in particular at the moment? You obviously launched this beautiful bag, and obviously that's available. Yeah. So, Thais, so Thais came out on the 10th of March, and obviously, mm -hmm. as you know, we, we went into lockdown shortly after. Mm -hmm. So my intention prior to COVID was that the, the Thais bag will run for the whole year anyway, mm -hmm. um, because we are developing the signature line. Wow. And that's that's going I very well. Wait. No, I can't you wait. Be, you I will can't be blown wait. away if I say I it can't myself. Wait. I can't yeah. wait. So the, yeah. So the signature bag are nearly the designs are, you know, being looked at. Wow. Um 
there's also, we've just finished, well, I've just finished creating the five-year product expansion plan. So mm-hmm. we will be moving into other areas, twenty end of 2021, 22. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to tell you what, you're not going to get the exclusive as to where no. we're going. I, I, but I <laughs> want, when you, we're going to go back online. We're going to do another story and another IG as soon as it does come out. Yeah, so we're going to do it. So once it's out, we'll do another exclusive IG to share it with the world. We've just got to. I'm so yeah, and I'm so, so and so that's that's there's, there's many things going on mm. behind the scenes that Fantastic. I'm so tempted to share sometimes, but I just can't. Um, I'm, I'm just going to stop and say Victoria Pierce, writer, has just joined. Thank you so much for your article on your blog. I absolutely loved it, and I oh. appreciate it so much. So thank you so much. Um, Hello, Victoria. That's amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. The article, the blog was really nice. I really loved it. Um, so, so as we expand, um, like mm-hmm. I said, we're going to go into um, other areas. Um, mm-hmm. The brand will be fully vegan. So we've, we've actually made a three-year pledge with Peter. Okay. I'm actually okay. hoping that it will be sooner than that. Um, uh-huh. I'm hoping by the end of 21 yes. that we should learn everything that we need to do. So with the current bags that are not vegan at the moment, once they fall away, either if if we're going to bring them back, then we would bring them back in vegan leather. So wow. that's the way we can move forward. So eventually, mm-hmm. all of our products will be vegan. We'll be and vegan. if we expand in, yeah, and if we expand into other markets as well, we'd be doing that as well. I want the brand to be a hundred percent vegan for the environment, cruelty mm-hmm. to animals. I do not want to participate in helping people to wear fashion at the you know detriment of an animal it's not it's not nice it's not nice it's not it's not I think when something troubles you to the point that you can't sleep at night yeah no I just started not to yeah I just started not to feel comfortable with it myself Mm -hmm. personally and I thought, if I'm not comfortable with it, then what do my consumers think? So, yeah. you know, people did say, well, you know, you could do half and half. You could sell, a, have a vegan range and still have, uh, you know, a full leather range. Mm-hmm. And I did think of that at one point. But then I said, no, because then to me, you're not being authentic. You still want yeah. both sides of the coin. I think of you course. need to make a decision. Are you a vegan brand or are you not a vegan brand? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so I decided that as we move forward, I want Amshella to be a vegan UK brand. Vegan. And, that's where, and that's where we're going. And it's exciting. And ladies and gentlemen, um, we're wrapping it up now. But if you don't didn't get a chance to see us speak to the lovely Andriana, Kerry Andriana from Amshella, an amazing um, designer brand, um, handbag designer that is just out of this world. Um, I'm in awe of her talent. Um, I've got all of her bags. And I'm really excited to see what the future, three years, and what is what is the future holding for this beautiful lady and this brand? I, I have no idea. I'm sure you're going to see it anywhere. You can have your own shop. I see the shop, the boutique. I see the runway show. I see everything. And I'm well, so you know excited. What I, see? I see all of that as long as it's God's will. That's correct. Yeah. That's exactly so right. I think if it's God's will that that should happen, done. it will be done. It will. Yeah. And um, right. where can they find your lovely brand? Where can they go to? Right, if they go to our website, which is www.amshella.co.uk, um, or we're on Instagram at Amshella, we're on Facebook at Amshella, we're on Twitter at Amshella, although I must admit I'm not that active on Twitter. We're not <laughs> that active on Twitter now and then, I'll be honest. But <laughs> if you go to our <laughs> website, www.amshella.co.uk, and thank you so much for joining me today, um, okay. Harry. You're so talented. I'm so blessed to have you as a friend. And I wish you nothing but great success with your brand. And the same to you as well. And welcome on. Before I go, congratulations on your single born again. I know it's doing well. Thank you. Well, thank right. you so it's much. Especially in the States. Yes, um, so it keep, is. Thank man, you. keep doing what I you will. do. Keep God thank first, you. as we do. And thank love you. you. Lot. Love you too, You're Kerry. Welcome. God bless you. Bye-bye, sweetie pie. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye. Bye, darling.